okay, this is a super ugly partial fractions decomposition. I'm not even asking about an integral of this thing. I'm just trying to get the decomposition done. And what's making this so ugly is this repeated quadratic factor. So our partial fractions decomposition proposal goes like this. I'm going to take a linear factor ax plus b over one copy of the quadratic factor plus another linear factor cx plus d over that quadratic factor squared. All right, so the pattern is like if I had if I had this irreducible quadratic cubed in my original function, I would have to then add another one with a linear term over that factor cubed. So you just go all the way from one copy of the factor all the way up to the maximum number. And then my linear factor constant over that linear factor. As usual, I'm going to multiply this by the least common denominator of all the terms that I see. And that least common denominator is x squared plus 5 multiplied by x minus 1. Forgive me for cramming that in the corner, but I'm going to run out of space otherwise. So when I distribute those factors to the left-hand side of my equation, all the denominators cancel out, and I just get a 1. When I distribute to the ax plus b term, one factor of x squared plus 5 cancels, and one doesn't. And the x minus 1 doesn't either. When I distribute to the cx plus d, both quadratic factors cancel, but the x minus 1 doesn't. And when I distribute to the e containing term, oops, plus the linear term cancels, but both quadratic factors do not. Okay, so that's quite a mess. And if I use brute force on this, it's going to produce a system of five equations and five unknowns for A, B, C, D, and E. But if we try to be clever about it, we might be able to get through without having to do too much algebra. So I'm going to start with a substitution trick and say let x equal 1. And the whole point of that is that it, it kills off these first two terms. Because I sub in x equals 1 and I get a 0 on them. The last term survives, so I write 1 equals the thing I get when I sub x equals 1 in here. 1 plus 5 is 6. When I squared, I get 36. So I get 36, 36e. And it turns out e is 1 over 36. So that's nice to be able to start out immediately getting one of these things. It gives me some hope that we can avoid the worst of the algebra. OK. Next, I get into the bookkeeping of figuring out the coefficient of x to the fourth, the coefficient of x cubed and x squared and x and all the constants and comparing on the left and right hand side. And before I directly go to that, it's going to be easier if I expand by at least multiplying two of these binomials in the first term. So that gives me ax cubed plus 5ax plus bx squared plus 5b times x minus 1. And if you like, you could expand um, by multiplying these two binomials in the middle term. It'll just save us some mental energy later. And then in my final term, I have an e times x to the fourth plus 10x plus 25. So I just squared that binomial using FOIL. OK. And then the reasoning goes that if this is going to be true for all x, then the coefficient of each power of x must be the same on the left and right side of the equation. So I'm going to start with the x to the fourth coefficients. And there are no x to the fourths on the left-hand side. And 
Another way of saying it is 0 x to the fourth is over there. And then I need to find all the x to the fourths on the right hand side. I'm not done expanding on, on the right hand side, but I don't have to be. I can find all the x to the fourth containing terms. I have ax cubed multiplying this x. That gives me an ax to the fourth. And any other multiplication in here is not going to produce an x to the fourth. There's no x to the fourth in the middle term. There's one stuck on e, though. There's an e x to the fourth. So I have a plus e x to the fourth. And that means a plus e must be equal to zero. And that means a is the negative of e. So I've just got my second term. a is negative 1 over 36. Then I look at my cubic terms. Well, if I take the ax cubed and multiply by negative 1, that's going to give me a negative ax cubed. All right, so that's going to be one of the coefficients of x cubed. Another way to get x cubed would be distributing this x in here, and I would get a bx cubed from that, so plus bx cubed. Oops. And are there any other ways of getting an x cubed? I got the x times the quadratic. I got the constant times the cubic in this first term. There's no x cubes in the second or third pieces, so that looks like it's it. And it turns out negative a plus b is equal to 0, which means a is equal to b. But I already found a, so now I've got 3 out of 5. This is going pretty well, except for the blue j in the background. And then I'll look at my quadratic terms. And I could get a quadratic by multiplying this x into this linear term, 5ax, so I get 5ax squared. Okay, so I have a 5a as a coefficient of x squared. And I get a quadratic when I take the bx squared times negative 1. So that's negative bx squared. And then I have another quadratic from cx squared. So I have a plus c. Um, and then it looks like I messed up on my cross term on e. When I square x squared plus 5, I get x to the fourth plus 10x squared plus 25. So 10e. is a coefficient of x squared. All right, so this one's a little more complex, but I already have um, a, b, and e, so I can get c out of this. So I have 5a, that's 5 times negative 1, 36, minus b, so plus 136, plus c, plus 10e, so 1036 is equal to 0. So negative 5 over 36 plus 1 over 36 is negative 4 over 36 plus 10 more gives me 6 over 36. So C plus 6 over 36, that's 1 sixth, equals 0. So C is going to be negative 1 over 6. All right, then I'll look at my linear terms, all the coefficients of x. I could get one of those by taking 5ax times negative 1. That gives me a negative 5a times x. And I can get another linear term from this first piece by taking 5b times x. So I get plus 5b. And then in my second major piece, here I have two linear terms, negative cx plus dx, so minus c plus d. And it looks like that's all my linear terms. Okay, so I have negative 5a, which is negative 1 over 36, plus 5b. B is negative 1 over 36. Minus C, that's a plus of 1 sixth. Plus D has to be 0. 
And these first two terms cancel each other. They're just opposites. And I end up with D equals negative one-sixth. So my original fraction decomposes into AX plus B. So each of those coefficients was negative 1 over 36. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and just write it like this. I'll pull the minus out in front and then leave the 36 in the denominator. ax plus b. I factored out the negative 1 over 36 already, so I get x plus 1. Uh, my next term is going to be a cx plus d. Those are both negative 1, 6, so I can take out the minus sign, put the 6 in the denominator, leaving me with an x plus 1 over x squared plus 5 all squared. And then finally, e is 1 over 36. So I end up with a plus 1 over 36 times the quantity x minus 1. 